What is going on everybody? My name is Earl here and what I have here is something that I am not very familiar with. As you can see on the box right here, this is an iBook G4. Now if you guys don't know what an iBook is, essentially these are Apple laptops before the MacBooks and I don't really have any experience with these because I didn't really grow up using these computers at all. I grew up around the 2008-2009 MacBook Core 2 Duo eras of MacBooks and so I really do not have any experience with PowerPC computers or PowerPC Apple computers. And so this is going to be the first time and I'm very excited because it even comes with two boxes or two packages which is interesting. I've never experienced that out of a seller. Here we go. Actually, this is not a charger. What is this? Holy crap, that's one thick book. I just remembered. This is a guidebook for macOS Tiger. There's so many things here. And actually, in fact, here's the listing right here. Oh, look at that. Thank you. The PC is being sent separately via priority mail. And I think this was around April, so almost a month ago. Here's the first look of this. And man, that is, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> There's a lot of things here. Another paper I don't need to read. Here's the charger. Look at this, it comes with everything, which I am very glad the previous owner has given to me. This looks like it has never been open. Look at that iBook G4 software install. So this was back in the day when Apple used to ship a lot of these computers with CDs and this is actually from 2005. We got the user's guide. I feel like this is what everything is given to you when you have the box. Everything is here, the getting started guide. And this was the time where they really showcase the Wi-Fi capabilities because look at that, about your Airport Extreme card. Now, if you guys didn't know what an Airport Extreme card is, it's an add-on to your computer at the time because back in the day, Wi-Fi wasn't very common. If you think about it now, you can't really live without Wi-Fi now. Well, back in the day, everything is through ethernet. So you have to plug it in and having Wi-Fi is a luxury. Look, it even shows you how to install extra RAM. Finally, we have the laptop right here, and my oh my, that is one thick boy. <laughs> I believe this is the 14 inch, and what is that? Oh, it's held by tape. That bottom looks surprisingly clean for a 2004 machine. I think this is a second to last year before they stopped making the iBook series completely. Now, the iBook series, from what I heard, is essentially the budget version. Oh. Let's see right here. What is this? Oh, it's showing basically how to use the computer. That's really nice of the owner. I really appreciate that. It actually shows the specs right here. So we have a 1.2 gigahertz PowerPC G4, and this has been upgraded to a whopping 768 megabytes of DDR. Not DDR2, not DDR3 or DDR4. The very first DDR SD RAM. I appreciate that a lot, owner. I really do. This is in good hands. It'll never be in a recycling facility because I will be keeping this for a good while and a couple of dusts here and there. So we're gonna clean this up first. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, after cleaning this computer, look how good of a condition this computer really is. Oh my goodness, this is a beautiful laptop. Because of that frosted look on that Apple logo, I think it really gives it depth to the design. And I feel like that's what makes it so interesting. And this is really, and I mean, I'm very serious about this. This is my first time ever holding an iBook or anything uh, G4 related laptops. And so I am just, surprised by how beautiful this thing is. I mean, look at that. Silver trim and the gray trim just matches well, very classy. Kudos to the previous owner for really just keeping this in phenomenal shape. And look at that. Look at those ports. Those ports look like they've barely been used. Can I hold this? No, I don't, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> that looks like a handle. I don't think that's how it's supposed to be. I think that's just a vent. Uh, yeah, that just adds to my unfamiliarity with these eras of Apple computers. There's even a sticker right there, I believe, that is still not taken off from out of the box. I mean, look at that. Is there any screen to show the viewers or is it that dim? Oh, wow, that is a pretty dim display. 
All right, here we go. Starting Mac. That was fast. Whoa, that was genuinely fast. Can we bring the brightness up? That's the brightest thing will ever go. All right, where do we begin? Let's go ahead and uh, check out about this Mac. It's running at 10.4, which I believe is Tiger. We can go up to 10.5.9 for this computer, I believe. We're gonna figure that out in a bit, but let's go ahead and check out the cycles on this battery and see if there's any evidence of life. Oh, <laughs> I tried scrolling down with two fingers and I guess that's not how this computer back then works. That thing is completely dead. Full charge capacity is 512 milliamps. Yeah, that thing is completely shot, but it's okay. That's not a big deal. I forgot this has a USB 1.1, I believe. So it's a very slow uh, USB. On top of that, the hard drive isn't really the fastest thing in the world, despite being very zippy, moving files that big, three gigabytes specifically, is not a good idea. You can see how it's taking four minutes to finish. While waiting for this, this is a test. And this computer is taking forever to upload or open a file called Sorbet Leopard. Oh, here we go. Okay, it's opening. All right, time to get rid of this. It is on Macintosh Garden, though it's also been mirrored to the internet archive as well. All right, so I'm getting a little bit frustrated here because, first of all, I just realized in order for you to actually boot up Snow Leopard or Sorbet Leopard, I meant, you have to go to Partition. And when I try to partition here, say if I want to create another one, I can't do anything. I, it completely is locked out. So that means I have to fully erase this computer and we have to start from scratch, which is going to take hours. Well, I did not realize I could have just done this the whole time. While trying to look solutions on the internet, I could have just booted up the disk drive for Tiger, and I could have just gone to the utilities, click the hard drive, click partition, and now I can actually partition the drive, which is freaking hilarious. I guess we could write this as Sorbet Leopard. I just realized I just completely erased the current Mac OS Tiger on the hard drive. So now I actually have to make two partitions. Perfect. So now what we have to do is get a fresh copy of this OS Tiger and click that, continue, install, and now we wait for this one. You know what? They were not playing when they said these installations can take up to two hours because the whole time I was thinking this installation right here, it said installation, I thought it was complete, but nope, it hasn't even started preparing for the installation. Fantastic. Speaking of getting started with my brand new iBook G4 right here, for best results when using the trackpad, keep in mind these tips. Use only one finger. Can you believe that? Back in the day, you're only allowed to use one finger on the trackpad at a time. <laughs> Interesting. Huh. Look at that, OSX Tiger, here we go, 10.4. Look at his ridiculousness right here. So I don't want to connect my computer into the internet, and if I want to skip the registration information, I can't. There you go. We're going to do this again. I'm going to have to install this painfully slow USB 1.1 or either one or something like that. Either way, it's slow. And then we have to do that. And then we have to install Sorbet Leopard into the actual hard drive. And then we can finally actually use Sorbet Leopard. Now, to keep things in mind, I think what you need to do whenever you're trying to install it on G4 is that you need to have a bootable disk, whether that's the recovery disk or a Tiger disk. And from there, you can go into recovery, go to disk utility and restore it. So that way you could partition and add another disk image on your hard drive. That's how I did it. It took forever because this computer generally is just on the slower side of things for some reason, but it is what it is. Here we go. Welcome to Leopard. Well, Snow Leopard specifically. 10.5.9. Officially, Apple's final version of Leopard was 10.5.8. You know, that purple U really reminds me of Ubuntu back in the day. I guess we have two operating systems on this computer now. We have Sorbet Leopard 
and we have Mac OS Tiger. Taking a look at this amazingly dim display, we're running 10.5.9 unofficially. One reason why I really like having Survey Leopard on this older computers is the fact that there's a quote unquote app store that we can download a lot of the PowerPC capable applications. So you could see right here, let's see how that works. If I just click download, does it just automatically download or do I have to? Basically, I think this is a website and I just need to click one of these links right here to just fully download it. So if I click that, does that download it? Yep, see that right there, that was fast. Okay, great. And it looks like it's fully downloaded now. You just need to open it and operation not permitted. You know what I just realized? I could have just downloaded all of these files into a flash drive and drop it in. Why do I need the hassle to download everything on this freaking computer when I have an actual computer that is working properly in the modern age? You know what? I'm going to do that now. Give me one sec. Well, ladies and gents, I have downloaded interweb for PowerPC on my modern machine, this system is quite efficient uh, in a way because first of all, very fast download speeds on my modern machine in comparison to this one. And all I have to do is just use this flash drive, plug it in to the PowerPC and call it a day. Well, ladies and gents, while my internet decided to take a dump, uh, I'm gonna try this again by clicking more and go to the red chair called YouTube and it should load. Come on, I guess it never does load, huh? Oh, I just realized we have the Minecraft Power PC edition. We should be able to play Minecraft here. We're getting somewhere after two minutes or something like that. Oh my goodness, what a slideshow. We are running at an astonishing five frames per second on this computer right now. So every time I put a block, it takes like 30 seconds to load the block, which is hilarious. You can see that right there. Super flat world. That definitely feels a lot better. Build a house with a light wall. Oh wow, that's so much smoother actually. Okay, now it's playable. <laughs> but we live in a super flat world with nothing. But you know what, my goal here is to make a house. If I make a house out of wool, there you go. I'm gonna make the most ugliest damn house in the world of Minecraft. I don't even wanna look at the frame rate, but it definitely feels like it's about 10 frames per second, but we're making a house right now. And I think every time I add more blocks into the world, it makes things a lot slower. And we surround this house with TNT. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Four frames per second. I'm gonna look at my name and scroll down again. And let's play one of these videos I have. This is not that bad, actually. We're running 360p, I believe, and things are on the slower side of things. You can see it's not even running a full 24 frames per second it's running like around 15 and can we even skip yeah you see that right there we're able to just watch videos with ease and although it might take a couple of times to load you know it's still very impressive and actually in fact we can even go to my actual youtube channel right here and scroll down and watch even more videos just like you should actually you know what the best part about this video or this youtube uh, running on this computer is that there are no ads at all we have some slow hiccups here and there once in a while with this computer but that's to be expected <laughs> I want to hear the bass on this computer. <laughs> there is no bass on this computer. It's very tinny, but it's very loud. So at the same time, it's good. At the same time, you don't really hear any bass, but it's still pretty good. It's really impressive for what it is. All right, let's go to every Mac. I think we should be able to load every Mac, right? It's not a very intensive website. We should be able to check out the specs of this computer. Come on, you got this. This is real time, by the way. <sighs> yeah, this is not going to work very well in today's modern age of computing. You know what? I think I'm going to conclude this video. In conclusion, I think this is a good retro piece, in my opinion. I feel like you really cannot use this for anything more than just the fascination out of it. Again, it's very similar to 
the very first MacBook Pro, which had the Core Duo uh, series chip on it, which was a 32-bit dual core. You really just cannot do a lot aside from just messing around with it, having fun with it. But when it comes to actually using the computer itself, that's a big no-no. I mean, you could probably use it for certain programs, but again, I feel like there's so many programs in the world that you could use instead of that particular program that is meant for an older machine like this one right here. This might be useful for someone who wants a power PC because of a specific program that they can't run on any other modern machines. But for me personally, I'm definitely keeping this because of how good of a condition this is. Really the only thing I found that is not is this little crack right here. If you could look at that closely right there. There's a bit of a hairline crack on that bottom edge. But other than that, I feel like this is such a beautiful laptop. I mean, man, man, oh man, this is a very good looking piece. Anyway guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It's been a journey and I really appreciate you guys watching these videos. I mean, it makes me want to keep pushing more. You can see how that's magnetic. That's a pretty cool design. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.